What is your name and where are you from? It's Bob Somrak Jr. from Cleveland, Ohio. And how did you originally hear about my website? I discovered you on Facebook, I believe, uh, or I was just searching for particular piano lessons online and, and did some of your free trials and then signed up to be a lifetime member. Great. All right. What did you like? Um, oh, I didn't ask you this. How long have you been been with me? How many years has it been? Did I ask you that already? I don't think it, I did. It, well, it's got to be at least since 2016. Okay. Maybe 2015 is when I first okay. found you. And, and Which doesn't listening. seem like that long ago, but I guess it's eight years now. Yeah. Yeah. Nine it, years. It's, okay. It's, you know, it's, it's um, a fascinating system you have. By the way, your system of teaching our previous music director, Max Menkhaus, he was studying under Todd Wilson, the the, or, the organist for the Cleveland Orchestra. And when oh, I showed him your sheets, okay. he says, you know, Bob, I'm doing a class on, on presenting different styles of how people play music. He says, this guy is really interesting. So <laughs> I love system, hearing that. Yeah, your, your system intrigued a guy who was getting his master's in organ <laughs> in, in applied organ from Todd Wilson, the Cleveland Orchestra organist. So. I love that because a lot of responses we get from classical musicians and people who are is that we're cheating or we're we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're, you know, these low level, dirty musicians who can't do it any other way or something. It's just that kind of, you know, looking down on us. I mean, I read music, too, but I've just found that which is a great skill. But some people need a different way to learn. And sometimes a different way helps this particular genre. I mean, when Elton John's ripping out a solo, he's not reading sheet music. And for me to show someone what he's doing, I can't use sheet music. I got to show them, you know, and do maybe some some patterns on the tablature that I used to show them. But uh, so next question, what do you like most about learning from my method? The exactness of the song. There, There is no improvisation to make it sound like it's not what it is no matter the, the whatever the degree of difficulty you're up for the challenge you don't take any shortcuts you you lay down the tracks just the way they were written well that's the highest praise i can get from uh from i i would say you know peer-reviewed <laughs> uh comment there um, what makes my method different from other online piano lessons well your method takes every phrase every measure and goes over and over it again and you encourage people to take time don't try to get through the whole song in one sitting spend as much time as necessary take a break come back and just being able to do that to go over it repetitively it, it's wonderful to hear it the, the only suggestion i'd make to you i'd love to be okay. able to hear and i know you don't have the time but i'd love to be able to hear the entire song <laughs> from start to finish after you do all the lessons. I hear that a lot. I, I never did that in the beginning because I was afraid of getting slapped with the copyright thing. Because if you do yeah. a performance, then you're in a yeah. different category. As long as I'm on the t on this line on this side of the line of teaching, I'm okay. But if I cross if I do the whole thing, I was always afraid, you know, that I would be crossing a line there into copyright stuff. Because if you do a cover, that's different, and someone right. might say that's a cover if I play it all the way through. Yeah. That's been my only, but I would, I would love to do that too. And I have done it a little bit on YouTube. Uh, so as long as the record companies get their cut, they're happy. So maybe I'll, right. maybe I can put those things as YouTube embeds on the site. So one of my ideas to do that instead of just good. putting it on my site myself, but that, that's, that is a great suggestion. And I have thought about it on a scale of one to 10. How satisfied are you with my lessons? The 10 plus. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> if I rate yeah. myself, I'm going to do you know, nine point something, because I always want to have room for improvement, room to get better. And uh, yeah, but I, I do appreciate that. Um, would you recommend a family member or a friend? And if so, why? Well, I would recommend anyone to you that's that's in music, because it's going to bring a different, a different, it's going to heighten their awareness to music. And it's going to bring the the real deal of, of, of why we play and why we learn, you know, you, part of your your mantra that you speak about, about sharing and, and all of the things you've talked about and giving the gift, you know, that's a big part of it. A lot of the musicians in Cleveland that travel to Nashville or other, or other states, they're really blown away to see how giving other musicians are. In Cleveland, it, it's like the, the musicians that have been here for years, they're almost like they're conceited. They, yeah. they don't want to share lines or riffs with people for fear that they're going to somehow be smitten or, or they're going to lose their standing and grace. Yeah. So you have that sharing attitude, which I admire that you don't. Thank you. Yeah. Anything I have was given to me. So I, I want to give it away too. 
Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you for answering those questions. I'm going to send you an email after we're done in case we get cut off here. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, there's a, a, a link in there for a Google review. Just take a minute to type something in there for me, uh, just kind of stuff we've been talking about here. But that's supposed to really help me in my SEO optimization, which I'm learning about <laughs> for Google. Yeah. But I would appreciate if, if you could do that. And before we go, is there any questions you have for me or anything I can do for you, Bob? Well, other than what we discussed earlier on the on the on the trilogy that I last sent you, you will enjoy those. I, I know you enjoyed. The I've enjoyed all of it. Yeah, I Do you know, know you how much it. I enjoyed going that song going down? That was yeah. so fun. I've always heard yeah. that song, never looked at, had no idea it was going to have. And I know it's a ton of pages, but yeah. I couldn't put a repeat because I'm like, nope, he plays it different this time. Nope. And I'm always, I have this thing. I can't, you know, like you said, do a shortcut. I've got to. And that's part of my, like, uh, you know, honor is a whatever, but it's also an OCD thing where I've got to, you know, do it. If he does it a little bit different, I got to write it out. So I could never put a repeat sign. And so we have yeah. every every last yeah. lick he ever did on the piano there. But that one was wow. a blast. I love that. And yeah. I look well, forward to looking well, the other at three, your... The other three are a blast. The Dave Mason, the Heartache of Shadow Lifetime, the the Andy Pratt Avenging Annie. You'll you'll like that one. That's got piano and organ in it. And, okay. And then the uh, Well All Right by uh, Blind Faith. That's That's got some cool... It, it, it goes between almost a boogie to a jazz theme. It's, it's interesting. Awesome. So, and yeah. Bob, I want to give you opportunity. A lot of my members are these entrepreneurs who, who have businesses and are highly successful in other areas besides music. Do you want to do a, 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 something for your business? You want to do, because a lot of people will watch these for your business. Anything you want to plug? Well, you know, Samurai Kitchens, my father got in this business in 1949. And over the years, we've, we've had a lot of our, our friends, family, and past clients move to other states. So we've delivered kitchens as far away as Ghana, Africa, <laughs> to, to all the way to San Diego, to Washington. Your state, we, we, I know we delivered something right smack in the middle of Texas. A lot of our clients have homes in Florida, so it's frequent that we're down. And I was down this year in Sanibel. We got one going on in Naples, up and down the eastern seaboard. So, it, so it's a fun thing. Uh, we love it. We enjoy it. Every, every customer is different. Uh, it's the one thing, you know, I don't have one boss. I have many bosses. And we have a great team here at Somrak Kitchen. So you can look us up on the web, Somrak, S-O-M-R-A-K, kitchens.com. I was going to have you spell it. Very good. Yeah. And so yeah. honorable people tend to do honorable work in their jobs and their occupations. So, yeah, glad you could do that. Thank you, Bob, for, for doing this. I hope to talk to you again. I, I will get back to you soon on your requests. And we're going to see that email with the Google link if you don't mind doing that for me. Thank you Be so much, sir. John, God you bless have a you. great day. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Be Bye. well. Hello. Hey, uh, Evan, is it turned up? Oh, okay. Hey, Bob, I can see you. I can't hear you yet. I can see you, and I hope, I hope you can see and hear me, but I can't hear you yet. Evan, is it muted? And the, the computer's turned up. What does it say on the, can you hear me, Bob? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. I think you're muted. Feel unmuted. Now? There we go. How are you doing, Bob? <laughs> I'm wonderful. Let me move Thank you, you to my other. Hang on. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. All right, Sean. There we go. Good. Great to I see can... your face. <laughs> wonderful to see you, Bob. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. You know, it's uh, I've had I've never worked on the business side of my a website ever and uh, I'm starting to do that now I got some business coaches and they recommended doing some testimonials and I have to tell you it's been a blast I love getting to meet you guys and you're one of my one of my guys I'm looking forward to to meet here uh, especially so uh, you know thanks for doing it I appreciate it. it's gonna help me out a lot I think well it's, it's my pleasure Sean I've been wanting to meet you for a number of years and you know it, it, business wise during COVID we we were not um, shut down or excluded because Governor DeWine in the state of Ohio deemed construction companies to be essential 
So in as much as uh, the rest of the world had shut down, we kept operating. Um, and we had a lot of client meetings with Zoom. So it was kind of a common thing to do Zoom meetings. So periodically, our manufacturers that don't want us to come to the plant will do town hall meetings and things. But yeah, it's 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 a good meeting. And, and obviously, uh, I've cherished everything you've done for me with regards to the uh, the charts that you've written out. Uh, uh -huh. Things that were taking me back in the 70s. God knows how many lifting of tone, tone arms, destroying vinyl LPs <laughs> to, to try to get yes. it right. Because I was trained, I was trained basically to read sheet music. Uh -huh. And in reading sheet music, for me, to chart everything out, it was a matter of, okay, here's the chords, here's the key signature, here's the time, work it out. And, and we had wonderful uh, people in the band that were near perfect pitch that could instantly listen to a song and say okay that's an a minor no that's in d that's in g and then you go from there but yeah all through yeah. the 70s you know i was playing rock and roll uh mostly piano and organ and uh it, it was a great time of my life and now that uh, the band is going on 50 years since oh, we wow. last did anything we want to get together <laughs> for a 50th year reunion um, and we're looking at different places to hold the venues to do these things. But a lot of the songs that you've you've worked diligently on uh, make up part of that venue. So, wow, I'm so interested in what. So you, you mentioned the band that you play in and say for 50 years, right? You said. Well, it, it would be the 50th year since the band played last. Okay. 19, 1975, 1976 oh. was, was the last time we played. Now. Oh, okay. Let, let's do the, let's do the cliff note version of this. All right. So after that had transpired and the band broke up, I went back and finished my college education, which if I had any regrets, it was that I was not a music major. And okay. I did one semester of music, aced all the classes, and my family and friends all said, Bob, what are you going to do with a music degree? Truly, what are you going to do with it? And then I discover <laughs> later in life after I finished that, that bachelor's in business administration, that there were friends that got music degrees and they went on and got MBAs or they went on and became <laughs> lawyers. And, yeah. you know, I, I could have gone down that path, but the family business called. So in, in the uh, mid seventies, when the band broke up, I left my employment <clears throat> at Gould Ocean Systems, making the Mark 48 torpedo for the U.S. Navy. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and went back to school full time uh, and and the plane kind of got suspended, although I would still practice at home. One of the things that I really loved doing when we were playing out is I had committed to memory, I think, three or four Scott Joplin pieces. So okay. during breaks, I'd be up there playing the Maple Leaf Rag, the Entertainer, uh, let's see, the Magnetic Rag, the Pineapple Rag. I, I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got involved with the church. So currently today at uh, St. Francis of Assisi Church in Gates Mills, Ohio, I'll back up our, our principal keyboardist who's a Chinese gal who's a, uh, a Steinway Award winner uh, teaching at the Cleveland Institute of Music. Um, she has perfect pitch. She's tough. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's, you know, she's driven. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I'm cantering the masses. So on, on Sundays, it's just her and I. I'm doing all the singing. And she's doing all the playing. So wow! I, I enjoy, wow! I enjoy I, I'm I'm curious. Here. I want to back. I want to back up a little bit. You've done a lot. I consider you. You probably wouldn't say this about yourself, but I consider you an expert musician. Um, from all the things you've done, all the things you've played, uh, a lot of the requests that you have for me, there's going to be one percent of the people on the website that's going to be able to even attempt some of those. So, I consider you know if you're able to to play those, that's just incredible because most people can't, even if they're giving good lessons. Um, so I want to go back to just when you first started music, when you were a kid growing up, uh, you said you know how to read music. So I guess you took traditional piano music lessons uh, and you probably with the traditional, probably had one of the traditional piano methods that we all use, the Sham, the Alfred or whatever uh, was around. Um, and then so that probably wasn't the music you were listening to that you wanted to play. So, so what was your experience growing up uh, according to your lessons and also what you wanted to play? Uh, how did that go for you? All right, so I'll date myself. Okay. So around 1957, 1958, my father is in downtown Cleveland at 
at, I think it was either Halley Brothers or Higby's department store. And he's looking for a gift for my mother. And he can't find anything. So he goes up on the floor where they're selling pianos and organs. And the fella asks him, you know, can I help you? No, I'm just looking. And he says, well, you know, we've got a sale on Baldwin Acrosonic pianos. <laughs> and my father said, well, I can't afford that. He goes, well, you can give your wife the gift and it won't cost you anything. He's like, what do you mean it won't cost me anything? Well, we'll give you a postcard with the piano on it. And you can make payments on it. So my father did it. <laughs> he bought the Acrosonic piano. Uh, it was shipped after the holidays. And I learned on that piano for a number of years through different medias, uh, w whether it be school or private lessons or lessons at a music emporium. And that took me through probably, I don't know, maybe 10th, 11th grade in high school. Okay. And then I was involved with our glee club. We had a wonderful instructor that we still see today. Uh, the, the, the core guys from the class of 70 at St. Joe's High School, we meet at the Trout Club out in Chardon, Ohio every November, and uh, we sit down to a trout dinner that was just recently snagged out of a pond, and 15 yeah. minutes later, we've got one wonderful trout, and and our coach, Tom Weiss, he shows up, and, and we sing a bit, and, uh, you know, that kept me going with the vocals, but in the band, I didn't really sing rock and roll, because my, my vocal range is baritone bass, okay. and it was more of a, you know, of a, a glee club operatic style. Yeah. And yeah, it just gotcha. didn't work well, you know, is singing Journey or <laughs> yeah. or, or or Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. So, yeah. you know, it, it works perfect for the church. And uh, people that knew me back then in the band days would hear me at church and they would be amazed. So it's helped out a lot of my friends who lost loved ones. I'll canter for the funerals for their parents' masses or friends. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy doing it. But, but that was my music, uh, you know. And then when I got involved with the band... The drummer who was in our group was was bugging me to get more involved in depth with with playing. So he's the one that bet me that I couldn't learn how to play ragtime. Okay. So at that point, I went out and learned ragtime and the Scott Joplin pieces. Yeah. And we used to travel around with a with a pretty beat up Lester spinet piano that I had electronic <laughs> pickups put into. Uh huh. Uh, and you know, between that and the Hammond organ with the Leslie speaker, yes. and there was a a built-in synthesizer wired into the upper manual of the Hammond organ, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And then while I was a, a, attending college, I worked for a, uh, a live entertainment equipment repair company in Cleveland, Empirical Sound. They're still around today. And I was the Rhodes Piano Tech. I was the oh world of piano Are you kidding tech. me? <laughs> so, so I got to meet Harold Rhodes. Harold Rhodes came into oh, the shop. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, like in 1976. 77, Harold Rhodes came in and showed me how to regulate and speed up the actions there. Uh, you know, Chick Corea came in. We got to do his piano back then and did a lot of that work, enjoyed it, uh, worked on clavinets, all those vintage instruments. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, I, I would be playing in different bands periodically just to sit in. But, you know, it, it all kind of took a hiatus and... Uh, Playing ragtime, one of the problems with that Lester piano, playing ragtime with that strong left hand, I broke a lot of bass strings. Yeah. <laughs> <I snapped> <laughs> right. <laughs> ragtime helps a lot of things, though, doesn't it? Have you found that, that, that yeah. ragtime, you're just, it, it just helps so many things. I won't get into it here, but uh, it helps yeah. all other genres. Chord, that, it, yeah. 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 Um, chord, chord. Yeah. Well, it was, it was, I'm impressed with, uh, yeah, you were, you were, you weren't just, you know, playing a garage band on Saturdays. You went out and played and gigged and stuff. Um, right. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah um, we, we would do, we would do the Cleveland Agora, which was a big hot spot here. Downtown Cleveland had parties in the park. And, yeah. and one of the challenges that I had as a keyboard player, I did not, because I didn't sing, I didn't have a monitor and my piano went directly into the front PA system. Yeah. So I remember we're downtown Cleveland at the Erie View Fountains. And about maybe five to 600 yards in front of me was the Erie View Towers building, which was like an 11-story high building. And my piano notes coming through the PA system would fold back off of the building. So I would literally hear the piano like almost two seconds after I struck. The oh, note. no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> that was... That was a real challenge. Just to, <laughs> Sound. Just to do that one. 
but that was a lot of fun. We we had gigs and we were the house band in several little local bars on the east side of Cleveland. And uh, yeah, and and some of my bandmates are still playing. Diane Leonardi, she's a flautist. She's still playing and gigging around town with a lot of different bands. Uh, yeah. Great gal, great vocals, uh, great flute work. Uh, Grant Graham Green, who was our lead guitar player, he's still playing. Some of the others are still playing. So, uh, Bob, do you I'm, still I'm, play uh, now? I'm, do you still go? Are there, is there a place you go and play besides church? You go out and play or, or just, not? Just the church. I, th I think with work, Sean, you yeah. know, owning a family business, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here way past 40 hours a week. The phones are turned off at five after five and the yeah. real work gets done between then and like nine o'clock. Do you miss Fortunately, it? Fortunately, my wife is in the same family business, so she gets yeah. it. So yeah. She's not wondering where Bob's at at nine o'clock at night. He's at right. Yeah. Do you miss it at all? Yeah, I do. I do. I big time. And, and that's why getting hooked up with you has been more or less a resurrection of bringing it back into my life and, Wonderful. and knowing your, your, your beliefs and, and knowing sure. the passion that you have when I first stumbled on you some years ago and I would just listen to the little snippets that you had on Facebook. And then when I finally saw that you were running a special on lifetime membership, I said, <laughs> I got, I got to yeah. buy this guy. This is, and, and you know, then, it's kind of go ahead. Just, just sitting back and waiting so that I could finally get you to, to do um, some one-on-one -on -one with me and, and actually doing the songs that I had suggested. You don't know how long I worked on those songs and never got <laughs> them right. And, and, and you don't yes. miss a note. You don't miss a beat, Sean. It's, it's just, yes, amazing. thank you. Well, I, I have to tell you, you know, I, uh, I love Jesus and I love rock and roll. <laughs> and yes. I think, you know, music is not necessarily evil or, I mean, it can't be made that way if someone, but um, just the, you know, blues, rock country, I love it all. And God gave me this gift and it's this one and it's, it's not for, you know, I can't perform, but, the gift he gave me is for one thing, and it's what I'm doing now. When I hear something, you know, I have that affliction they call perfect pitch. I hate that term because it's not perfect. But um, anyway, anything I hear, and it's like this from when I was a little kid, I know exactly what's going on with all the instruments without even having to, you know, go to the piano to figure it out. It all just comes to my mind. But beyond that, if it, somehow after taking lessons and playing the piano for a while, it's like my mind will take all the instruments and put those in a, you know, a composition as well. So you get the best of the piano plus a bass part. If you have a cool bass part or, or vocals or something, you know, that you can uh, maybe artistically put in there so that you get the band sound. So I'm always thinking pianistically also with hearing, you know, all the notes that are in there in any particular composition. And then it actually, I spend most of my time not figuring it out, but trying to play it because, you know, just because I, I know what notes are doesn't mean I can play it yet. I have to actually get in there and physically learn it like everybody else does. And uh, that's been, that's been my thing. And that kind of brings me to my question here. You're a professional um, and, and, you know, an expert musician. I, I, I said that with no qualms. I believe that. Uh, why would you go to you know, a website that teaches piano lessons. What is it about my side? I mean, you can also read music. Some people come to me because they can't read music and my tablature system will help them kind of bypass the music reading part, but you can read music and you well, can also play and you you could figure it out anything if you wanted to. What it is it about my lessons that, you know, attracts you to, to watch them at all? Well, what attracts me to your lessons and, and the difficulty I had is if, if I couldn't figure out a piece by listening over and over and over again, I would go to the local music store and try to find a chart, a sheet. And, and obviously it wasn't correct. It was far from it. And I couldn't improvise enough to be able to get the exact notation or so much was going on. I would have needed a four track or an eight track yeah. studio to separate and isolate just the keyboard. Mm -hmm. because there's and, and you're able to cut through that somehow and you can just focus on and hear all of the piano parts and that's just something i was never able to do so when i started listening to you and i bought into your system i said i said this is amazing this gives me everything that i've longed to do um you know long long before i asked you to do uh, my favorite songs you know i'd be listening to something that was done by by steve winwood uh, or mm -hmm. blind faith and you know you would have the solo right down to the letter and i was just yeah. amazed by that i you know the the amount of time that i would be able to spend to do what you do would take me god knows days weeks 
and, yeah. and you're able to knock it out relatively quickly. And it's done. Once to, I get to it, <laughs> it's done to perfection. There, there's, you know, there's nothing that's missed. And, and that's what's, uh, it's so wonderful that, that you're able to do that. It, and it truly is a gift, you know, it is. Um, it we is all a gift. have we... gifts of life and, and people tell yeah. me, you know, I have a gift of memory and I have a gift of voice, but you have a talent that's, that's uniquely to your style, but it's, it's spot on, it, you know, it's, it's, and you're dedicated you. to it and, and you love what you do. And, and, do. and starting out, you know, when I look back at your earlier recordings, when you were much younger, I don't know, yes. how, what is it, 15, 20 years ago? It's been probably uh, pro almost 18 years now. Yeah. 18 years. When I look at those first videos, you know, and I'll listen to your recording of Genesis for the fifth, yeah. you know, and, and, and I could just imagine, well, boy, if he redid that today, you know, yeah. because the studio quality that you're able to record in today, it was a little different back then. Yeah, it and, was, you know, <laughs> but, it, but it's still spot on. It's still spot on. And, and you know what I noticed, Bob, I had some, one time I had a particularly kind of complicated uh, thing to do and uh, somebody hired me to do it. And I found out later that I'd already done it because I titled it wrong way back then. And uh, then I compared the two and they were pretty much exactly the same from 17 years ago and, you know, maybe two or two years ago. And that yeah. kind of made me, you know, feel good about that, that, the, you know, that maybe the quality is, is, was, has been there the whole time, even though the technology wasn't the same. Um, and yeah, this one gift that God has given me has been for this. You know, I think we can take credit for if we work hard at something and say, well, look, I worked hard and I did this. If it's a gift from God, you, you know, there's no, no credit there. You just, your responsibility is to use it how he directs you to use it. And that's what I'm getting to do. I'm hearing all these stories of you guys being able to play, play, play these songs you've always wanted to play. And I'm, I'm, I'm so overjoyed to be part of that, you know? And so uh, it's yeah. just, I, I give thanks to God and Jesus for that every day. And Thanks to, for you guys. Um, and I have, I do have your list. I want to tell you before I forget your list of three. I haven't got to, to uh, do a bit on them yet or listen to them because we're doing all this business stuff, but I, I do plan to. So I have your email earmarked. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy it. One of the fun things about church is when I first got involved with the music ministry there, there was an, an incredible pianist, keyboard player there by the name of Christopher Telsro. You could probably find him on, on YouTube. Unfortunately for Chris, he was adopted, never knew his medical history. Okay. So at 40 years old, he winds up with colon cancer mm. and he goes in through surgery and then it comes back as it metastasized into his system. And I'll never forget. And he's the one that encouraged me to do backing keyboards at the church. He's the one that went out and got the church to, to cough up the money to buy the Yamaha. Uh, I think it's a CP seven. It's a seven foot, you know, concert grand. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had for for years there we've had an Allen organ, you know, which is a digital, but it does sound quite like a pipe organ. And and Chris was just an amazing individual. And and I know when he was short to leave this earth, he did a concert for the church. He's got an IV pump hooked up to him, and oh he's playing God. this this complex Gershwin song from memory more than than Rhapsody in Blue, much more complicated than that. Okay, and, and I, I was he was just amazing, and unfortunately, then he left this earth. But that knowing that the church has those two instruments, that that's kind of a unique thing. Um, oh yeah, we have a we have a wonderful sound system that was donated by a, a parishioner that's no longer with us at the church. Um, Tom Arco, his he, he owned Eighth Day Sound, which is the second largest touring professional company in in the world, and he was acquired by Claire Brothers. So Claire Brothers owns Eighth Day, but Tom is still in business, and he put in a, a 32 channel Yamaha mixer, 64 channel mono. Wow! Uh, and it's all this Dante system. It's all this complex stuff. But that's what we have in the church. It's kind of cool. how many? How, how how big is this church? How many members you have on a Sunday? Well, in the music department, in the music end of it, it's small. We used to have 30 some. Now we only maybe have I don't know. We have like 15 vocalists. We have maybe a half a dozen uh, instrumentalists. But Julia, because of her affiliation with the Cleveland Institute of Music, she's bringing concert series. Okay. Uh, she's brought it. She's brought in the the uh, oboe player, who's the assistant oboist oh, for the Cleveland Orchestra. Yeah. So she's brought in some talent from you know over the country to play these concerts. Yeah. Well, that sounds like so music is a really big big part of your service, not just something on the side that you do. And and I, I you know I love the praise and worship stuff, but sometimes I I miss the the higher level stuff you're talking about. And this guy right here, 
my one of my oh, yeah. idols. Uh, yeah, yeah, music was real important in his day, and he he's kind of responsible for a lot of things we do today. So I, I uh, your church sounds really interesting. If I'm ever if I was ever in the area, I'd like to <laughs> attend a Sunday morning and hear some music. Well, well, I, I said to you, I have a my sister's oldest son works in the oil industry near Houston. And, you know, his, his hours are, he works two weeks on, two weeks off. Yeah. And he works 12 hour shifts. And and I guess he controls not only oil down there, but he controls natural gas up in West Virginia and other parts of the country from, from Texas. Okay. So I'll have to get down there and visit him, buy, buy some <laughs> yes. boots, some leather yes. and, you know. And I'm cool. serious. I'm, I'm offering this to you know, anybody I talk to. If you're in the area ever, Bob, please look me up and we can meet. We can come jam here, play some. I have several uh, keyboards, real acoustic piano, guitars, drums. My whole family plays stuff, so it would be fun <laughs> if you're ever yeah. visiting Magnolia, because a lot of wives like to come visit. 